Uh, okay, let's start. Uh, good morning and welcome back. Uh, yesterday, uh, there were some questions regarding a uh, couple of cases like uh, why does this happen every time? Okay, so uh, yesterday there were a couple of questions regarding why we are joining the two transistor drains uh, in order to get double uh, the current mirroring, right? So the case that I'm pointing to is the following. So we were generating this VGS, the required VGS, from a direct connected device. And then we were supplying this to other non direct connected devices and something might be attached uh, at the drain of this other NMOS, right? If this is M1, this is M2, something will be attached to the drain of M2. So now we, what we said is if we want to, let's say, uh, double the current of M2, one way to do is to simply multiply by the, the WL by factor of two, uh, mathematically that checks out, but the better way to go about it is doing copying this transistor again, right? Just copying this same thing again. If this is W by L, this is W by L, and joining these two. It's uh, the assumption that obviously the, uh, the sources are joined, right? And this also needs to be connected, obviously. Okay, so uh, so uh, this is this uh, this is quite uh, this is quite simple if you understand this, right? Uh, so if you have a network N and you are trying to, I mean, this is being driven by something, and you have multiple ports, let's say, or simply let me just point it out as terminals with some with understanding that there is a, a ground. So let's say this is V one, this is V two, this is V three. And something is attached to V1, V2, V3. And you assume that there are some currents going in I1, I2, I3. Okay. What will happen if I simply copy this network? And let's assume that these are being driven by some sources for the time being. Right? So V1, V2, V3. What will happen if I copy this network and similarly apply V1, V2, V3, which means that I am connecting these node to node. Would you comment on the uh, on the currents flowing into the magenta lines? No, I mean, uh, okay, so it might be confusing here. So these are also connected to sources, right? They are identical networks. I mean, in the absence, okay, so in the absence of this interconnection, this, this current will be I1, this current will be I2, 
Three, right? So now when I connect these two, sorry, no. oh, so if I connect these, then the current through these magenta blocks will be zero, right? And nothing changes. So now assume that you are the user who doesn't know whether there are two blocks connected inside or one. Okay, so what I essentially mean, assume you are the user and you are only, this is your black box. And if that is a black box, let's me call this black box 2N. And you have ports V1, V2, V3. And you have sources connected here, not drawing the sources, just make it clunky. So now if you are observing the current going in these ports, what will you observe with respect to the case when you had only one of the networks connected? Twice, right? So this will be 2i1, this will be 2i2, this will be 2i2. Correct? So this is nothing but the fact that I have connected two networks in parallel. Okay. So, so for as far as the user is concerned, he or she is not seeing any change in voltages, but you are seeing doubling of current. Right? And could you comment? Whether this is true for linear network, nonlinear network, time varying network, or it's true for everything. It's, it's true for everything, right? Because I haven't imposed any any other condition, right? You can just you, you are just adding the uh, uh, currents in parallel. So now in that context, let's look at this network. Okay. So in, so now if I wanted to double if I wanted to double the current of one transistor and I don't want to physically increase the size of the transistor, all I am doing is ensuring there is another identical transistor. I'm supplying the same VGS, which means the gate and the sources are connected together. If I have to double the current, so I want to mimic this like a transistor, which is double the width. All I need to do is connect these. This is equivalent to connecting two networks in parallel by connecting them node to node. And I'm observing this current. So for all practical purposes, this is my, this is the box with a bigger transistor. This seems like a box with a bigger transistor. Right, so that's all this is doing. I mean, there is no rocket science here. Okay, fine. So. Um, uh, so let's move on. Uh, so we were uh, discussing uh, um, ways of biasing tra transistors with constant current source. We had covered essentially two of them in fair amount of detail. There are two more remaining. So let me take up uh, the third one that is uh, feed at drain and rather apply, apply push current into drain. And feedback at source. So, so now you can help me out now that you know the trick. So when I say I have to feed current into the drain, which means I'm constraining you and telling you that this I not current, I'm putting pushing into the drain. And I want to feedback at the source, which means I'm not touching the gate. So the gate is be constant biased with some voltage. The value of the voltage can be figured out later. But let's assume that the transistor leads to in saturation, we'll figure out what the value of the VB will be. So now what I am saying is, I need to do something to the source by observing the voltage at the drain. So what will be the algorithm now? You can, again, for the sake of simplicity, assume there is a small capacitor CP. So that it helps in the uh, in the thought process of what happens if a current increases and decreases. So what will be my uh, algorithm? Yes. No, no, no. In the, we didn't do that, right? So in, in that case, 
firstly, in this case, when we did this, we place the capacitor here, observe what happened to the drain voltage, and then tweak. In the other case, we, the tweaking place and the observing place was the same. So it didn't matter. But anyhow, I mean, the placing the capacitor is not fundamentally important. You can argue any way. So, so I mean, I mean, in our mind, we always have this if and then condition, right? Which means there is a causality associated with it. If you have an F cause, then effect comes after some time. So capacitor is a memory element which helps visualize that effect. Otherwise, everything is instantaneous and we cannot really, I mean, at least in my mind, I sometimes feel it. I mean, you, how can you have an effect immediately? But anyhow, I mean, fundamentally, putting the capacitor is not particularly important. So, what will be the uh, what will be the algorithm? Walk me through it. We compare. We assume there is some current ID, right? And the whole purpose of this feedback loop that we need to place is the fact that what happens if I naught is different from ID. So let's assume I naught is more than ID, or rather ID is less than I naught. Right. If what happens if ID is less than I naught, this voltage increases, and I need to do something to the source. What do I need need to do to the source in order to match these currents? I should decrease. I should decrease. Right. So naturally, I mean, simply connecting these two will not help. In the other case where we uh, uh, where we fade back at the gate, connecting would have helped because the sense of the feedback would have been right. But in this case, the sense of the feedback wouldn't be right if I simply connect it. Okay. So, so now what do I need to do? I need to decrease the source. And given the fact that I have access to voltage control current sources, let's do the incremental sense. Uh, given that we have access to voltage control current sources, how can I decrease current? How can I decrease the voltage? Right. Okay. No. The, so, so is it fine always because we don't know what's going to happen to the current source if if VD keeps on increasing infinitely, isn't it? So, so ultimately the voltage at the drain needs to get balanced. Right. If I naught is greater than ID, the voltage at the drain will keep on increasing. Right, and it will ramp up. There is no limiting factor. So the only, only the uh, only time it will get uh, it will not increase and it will stabilize. It's when it, when the current matches, right? When I naught becomes equal to ID. So if you leave it like this, the current will not automatically match. So if VD will keep on increasing and maybe I naught will get crushed. It's so I mean you cannot really go to zero voltage across I naught. Even though in ideal cases you can, but in practical cases you cannot. Ah, okay. So, yeah. So if you if you keep VG same and you reduce S, then it will increase ID out, right? Right. So then we have to see whether that is enough or not. But that essentially is a sense of the loop, sense of the negative feedback loop. So I need to reduce the volt, uh, voltage at S. So how do I fundamentally how do I reduce the voltage at any node? I have only two things to do. I can push current or pull current out. I can pull current out, right? So I need to pull current out. So now, so I need to pull some current out, right? But this current cannot be an independent current source. It has to be dependent. And what it, what does it need to depend on? So if VD increases, I need to pull current out of source. No, so if VD, so what happens if VD increases, I need to pull, I mean, I need to reduce VS, right? How do I reduce VS? I need, I pull more current out. So that's the algorithm. No, the independent current source in the top, that is non-negotiable. Ah, I can have I naught there, but the problem is now this, this is an, in, these are two independent current sources. And you cannot really guarantee two independent current sources will be identical. They might be different. So you'll end up with the same problem. Correct? So you cannot have two masters. There can be only one master. That's the problem. So this has to be dependent then. 
you cannot have this to be independent. If this has to be dependent, what should it depend on? It should depend on the voltage of the drain. If the drain increases, this, incre this should increase. In, I mean, the value of this current cell should increase, right? So essentially, this has to be this has to be proportional to the voltage of PD. Yes. This is in an incremental sense, by the way. Right. Okay. Yeah. Continue your question. Like when we are doing the separation, where MSB is valid, still there will still the current portion pull out of current. Correct. So it will it might decrease the total voltage. Yeah. So 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 if the sense of the feedback is right, it will stabilize somewhere, right? In the sense that if it keeps on, what you are essentially saying, what prevents us prevents it from keeping on decreasing the source voltage, right? So let's see if source voltage is lower than what is necessary, what's going to happen? If source voltage is lower than what is necessary, the ID will be higher than I naught, right? If ID is higher than I naught, what will happen to the drain voltage? It will decrease. Then it will auto correct, right? So it goes both ways. Does this make sense so far? <laughs> I don't know, but this is the only thing that I have. If I had something which had VD square, I would have put that. Right. So if I don't know, as I said, I mean the simplest solution is the best solution in the absence of any other information. Right. So then we have to see. Then the analysis comes in whether this is enough or not. Right. If it's not enough, then you have to go and do it. Okay. Okay. So as long as you are satisfied, now the next step is simple. Right. So we have to replace this with actual transistor. So what should I do? Yeah, so this is a, I mean, the way I have drawn, this is an incremental thing, right? Because ultimately you are trying to get the sense. When you're trying to get the sense of which side the voltage should go, you better to think in terms of incremental model. Then if you are satisfied, then you put in the full, full transistor and see whether biases are proper or not. Right? So now if uh, this is fine, then what all we need to do is to replace this stuff with the Okay, so why am I calling this incremental? That's actually a good question. So I'm calling this incremental because at the back of my mind, I know that I'll, I'm going to replace this with a transistor. But if you already have an access to an ideal voltage control current source, you can just plug it in. It need not be incremental. Okay, but ultimately, uh, uh, in reality, voltage control current sources are active devices made with transistors. Okay, so. If I now do the final do the final connection, this stuff essentially now becomes a transistor. Okay, okay, forget about small signal. We we are trying to put a control source which can do the job. BD minus BD Okay, okay. Yes, you are correct. So let me frame it in a different way. Let's assume you have access to control sources. Let's assume you have access to this linear control sources. Then I put in this linear control source. Then I see that I don't have a particularly linear control source, but I have a nonlinear control source, which is a transistor. I'm going to replace that with a transistor. So that's essentially the thought process. Okay. Correct. So, okay. So let's assume that if you have access to an incremental source, if you put it like this, will it work? Let's assume the incremental sources are, or the control sources, linear control sources are available. It will work, right? So, so if I, on the circuit on the left, if you have availability of this alpha times VD or this type of sources, then if you plug it in like this, it is, it's going to work. Now, the issue is I don't have this alpha times VD uh, ideal voltage control current sources available, but I, I have a replacement of that in terms of transistor. So, which essentially means that if I have to replace this with a transistor, the circuit on the left essentially becomes a small signal equivalent of, of the transistor level circuit. 
right? So I'm trying to design something here and get to where I need to be using transistors, right? Yes. We haven't yet arrived at the transistor saturation. You have to ensure the biases is such that transistors are in saturation. But yeah, go ahead. Correct. It's proportional to square. We'll see. Right? Uh, is this part clear till now? Yes. Yeah, the capacitor is just for understanding, right? The, the, the job the, for Poisson setting up, capacitor is not required, right? So it, it just if you want to figure out which uh, what happens to the voltages, then it's better to put a capacitor. But if you are comfortable, you can remove the capacitor also. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay, okay, so maybe let me go back to uh, the previous one. Let me take you back to one of the initial lectures. So how do we come up with, with this uh, transistor level equivalent? We said that uh, we, uh, we have a two-port network. The two-port network needs to have certain properties. If we assume that the two-port network was linear, everything was linear, then we said that we found all been out over VI, and we said that okay, input impedance has to be infinite, output impedance has to be infinite, and all those things. Then we did, we assumed that the feedback of y21 was zero, y, y12 was zero, and y21 was very high, and so on. So that was all in the linear in linear sense. Then we said that this is not available, but is is some some replacement of it available? As it turns out, yes, a transistor is a replacement of that in an incremental sense, right? So now you, you apply the same logic here. So I have a transistor and I'm trying to bias the transistor in a certain way. And I'm going back to that idea that I, what if, if I had an increment linear source, perfectly linear source, how would, I, how would I have used it? So the circuit on the left would have, would have done that, right? So now one step forward that this linear source doesn't exist. Same argument, what can I do? The next best step is to use whatever exists. A transistor exists. I am going to replace this with a transistor. Right? Okay, fine. Now, let me see if, I, if there is a better explanation. Mm. So if I have to tie up the, uh, the question that he asked that, uh, but we know that our transistor is not a linear source. In the actual sense, it, go, it goes as square, right? So how does these two correlate? Like, uh, as the VDC, the yeah, so essentially, uh, yeah, exactly, exactly. That, that's what essentially uh, the correlation between these two models are. So ultimately, when you are trying to balance two things, you are essentially trying to figure out the sense of what happens if something changes. Right? What happens if VD increases? How should I balance it? Right? So in, in your mind, you are essentially doing uh, incremental analysis. Right? You are, you are checking the delta. If I0 is not equal to ID, let's say I0 is ID plus delta, ID plus delta I. If I0 is slightly higher than if I, or let's say ID is equal to I0 minus delta I, what's going to happen? If ID is I0 minus delta I, I know that this voltage is going to increase. It's incrementing. If that is incrementing, this current will increase and it will balance. So in the, in the, if you can balance it in the incremental sense, then you know that whatever Poisson it's supposed to be at will, stay, will, will remain steady, right? Ultimately you want steady Poisson. So the steady Poisson is achievable if you set the, if you can ensure that incrementally nothing changes. Does that make sense? Now, if, if you can ensure that incrementally nothing changes, then you can use incremental analysis to come up with a circuit or come up with a network which stabilizes the Poisson. Yes, everything is incremental. Everything is incremental. And we require the biases simply because transistors are not linear. Mm -hmm. The other way to think about it is uh, a transistor gives you a, a transistor is a GM and it gives you 
decent values of gm when when it's in saturation not in linear right linear it will give you lower values of g so if your transistor is not in saturation and let's say assume it's in linear region then this strength of this loop will be low small in the sense that you will be increasing vd but the corresponding change in current wouldn't be high right so ultimately what is the principle of negative feedback the principle of negative feedback is you are, you are trying to balance something or you are trying to minimize the error between actual output and expected output. So in this case, you are trying to minimize the difference between I0 and ID. Okay, so, so you are comparing these two, you are comparing I0 and ID and trying to figure out what is happening if they are not equal and you are trying to minimize the difference. So the loop that uh, the loop that is trying to minimize the difference has to be strong in order to do this properly. If this loop is weak, by weak I mean that if the uh, you are you are trying to kick the loop in the right direction, and let's say the loop is so weak that this doesn't exist. In the sense that if alpha equal to zero, if alpha is equal to zero, then this loop doesn't exist. If alpha equal to zero, the loop doesn't exist. There is no feedback. Now alpha is a, equal to zero is a special case. Alpha need not necessarily be equal to zero. It can be very small. If it's very small, obviously the loop will not work properly. Now, if that is the case, we need to ensure that the transistors are biased in such a way that I can get this maximum proportionally constant. And that I can get everything if everything is in saturation. That is another way of thinking about it. Now, when you are going into saturation, we know that this uh, uh, the current voltage relationship is not linear. It's fine, it's not linear, but as long as it's incrementally linear or it, as long as it's, uh, it, it suffices incrementally, we should be, we should be fine. Yes. Because the other one is a MOSFET, right? Like inserting incremental analysis, you should remove all that issues. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you can do that. I mean, so, so I am. So your question is, it looks like I have combined uh, twice and with incremental, right? Yeah. So in fact, I have done that. But in this case, you you will need to do that because you are trying to figure out what happens if the quiescents don't match. That's just like yes. Ultimately, when you will be doing the analysis, then obviously you have to remove it and then do the analysis. Otherwise, it will not make sense. Yes. So can you say that because the direction of the uh, corrective measure that alpha will take is the same as the quotient uh, current will be taken? Correct. So that's why you can analyze in terms of incremental and quotient. Correct. Yeah, that essentially is what we are doing. Uh, another way of thinking is uh, if you, you you arrive at quiescent when there is no change, right? The definition of quiescent is there is no change, right? It's a DC condition. So if the quiescents don't match, then there will be change. If the quiescent conditions in this case, let's say I naught is not equal to ID, then there will be change, which means you are not in quiescent conditions anymore, right? So something is changing. You are then imposing the incremental or whatever you have, uh, in this case, a uh, incremental source to ensure that things are okay. And even if you are not comfortable in thinking in terms of incremental source, as I said, that you assume that you have ideal voltage control current sources available. If you have ideal voltage control current sources, then if you hook it up in the way that I have shown here, it should still work in the absolute sense also. Right? If you have use ideal voltage control current sources in the absolute sense, there is no difference between incremental and absolute in case of an ideal linearized voltage control current sources. So this will still work. Yes, it is, but in the incremental sense, the direction is still the same. Right. Yeah, yeah. So we have to do the analysis and see. That part is up to the analysis, right? So you set it up, you design it, and then you go back and do the analysis and see whether it matches or not. Right? Okay, fine. So so maybe we can do the analysis now. Uh, so let's say this is dB. M1, M2. So now uh, tell me we should start off with some values or okay, fine, let, let it be. 
Uh, now tell me what's, what needs to happen to ensure that uh, M1, M2 both are in saturation. Firstly, okay, firstly, let's, let's see whether after putting the transistors in, whether I am breaking, uh, whether it's the negative feedback still makes sense. In the sense that this current, right? So will these two currents match while keeping M1, M2 in saturation and I, I not also will not get crushed? Yes. Right. Uh, I not is changing. I not is not changing, right? I not is not changing. But uh, what I am trying to do is I am trying to put another dependent current source, which is looking at I not and modulating its value. So that's the incremental. That's the voltage control current source. The, the function of the control source. So that's why I couldn't put an independent current source at the bottom. It's it then it becomes one current source from the top driving another current source from the bottom. You cannot practically match both both of them which means the, the voltage will either increase or decrease at the intermediate node and something will break in the sense that either the transistor go, will go out of lead saturation or the, the current source on the top will get crushed. So in order to ensure that they are matched, you have to at least make one of them dependent on the other. You cannot have two masters. That's the problem, right? So now when I have put these two, put this configuration in place, uh, now the next question is, do you think this will satisfy my uh, I not equal to ID condition while keeping M1, M2 in saturation and not crushing I not? Or this will cause a problem? How will you go about uh, analyzing that? So the analysis will be that you, uh, you assume that M1 and M2 are in saturation and see if a solution exists. Right? If a solution exists, then you are fine. If it's not, then there's a problem. If you put two current sources in series, then solution doesn't exist. Correct? Solution doesn't exist as in no stable solution exists. The voltage will keep on ramping and it will go to infinity. The infinity will be one of the solutions. That is not what we are looking after. Okay. So now let's see if the solution exists. Let's assume that these two are in saturation. So how will you figure out if the solution exists or not? Okay. Okay. So let's assume these two are identical. Let's assume the solution exists. So the currents are I naught and I naught. I mean, okay. Okay. Correct. You, what you said is absolutely right, but uh, there is another way of looking at it in the sense that who is setting the, I mean, there is a current source from top who is pushing the current, but who is setting the current, who is, uh, who is setting the current in uh, through the transistor? Not really, right? That is not really because the source is not grounded. Source of M1 is not grounded. You can find, but but the point is is okay. So the other way of thinking is, if I uh, if M one is setting the current, then if I change the size of M one, the current should change. Correct. Do you agree? So, okay, so uh, think of it in this way. So let me take that statement back because this is, uh, uh, it becomes difficult to uh, intuitively understand because we are anyway biasing it with a constant current source. Let's not go into current changing domain, but let's assume that uh, if I, um, let me ask you in this way, why do you think M2 is not setting the current in the loop, uh, in the stack? M2 is dependent on the drain voltage of M1. That's fine. 
No, 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 right? So that in fact is the one that is setting the current, right? Because ultimately your VD, this voltage VD is instrumental in setting the current, isn't it? So this, note that this is supposed to be a current source. This is supposed to be the dependent current source. So this is what, what is controlling the current. And the, this is what is controlling the pull down current. Right, the current from the top is constant, but this M2 is essentially controlling the pull down current by tweaking how much current there should be in the stack, isn't it? So, so essentially in this case, your M2 is trying to modulate the current or in this case, M2 is trying to set the current. You have a question? We, we haven't checked yet, but we have to ensure that these are in saturation that we haven't yet done. So if these are in saturation, like if these are in saturation, what will be these? What will be the gate voltage of M2, which will be equal to in terms of current I naught? <coughs> threshold voltage are identical. Let's assume M1, M2 identical threshold voltage. You have current I naught flowing through this. You yeah, assume same W by L to start up. Then we can tweak later. So what is the VGS of a transistor if current I naught flows into it? Plus V overdrive, right? And V overdrive is under root two I naught by mu C of W by L. So this will be VTH plus V overdrive because source is rounded, correct? So if this is the same thing, these two are connected, this is VTH plus V overdrive. Okay. So what does VB need to be at least to ensure that uh, M1 is in saturation, then we'll get to M2. At least one threshold voltage above. So no, I mean, below, correct, right? So VB should be, VB max should be what? VB max should be 2VTH plus V overdrive. Because ultimately what do you want? You want at least one threshold voltage drop between these two, right? I mean, that is the maximum you can have. I mean, it's better if you are staying away from, but this is the limit. You cannot go uh, higher than this. Right, make sense? So if that is the case, what's going to happen to the Source voltage here. If you assume same W by L for M1 and M2, which means V overdrive is same. Uh, is this will be uh, Y R? It, no. So this will be whatever V B minus V G S for current of I naught. Correct. You know the threshold. You know the voltage at the gate. Voltage at the gate minus one VGS will be the voltage at the source, right? So voltage at the gate minus one VGS. So VGS is what? VGS is one threshold voltage plus overdrive. Correct. So this becomes VB minus. Okay. So. So in case of VB max, if I if I substitute the value of VB max, what do I get? VB max is two VTH plus VOV, so one VTH one VOV go. This becomes threshold voltage. So your source voltage. Let me let me make it a bit less messy. <coughs> So this is the maximum voltage VB is two VTH plus VOV. This is VTH plus VOV. This becomes VTH.
Okay, so now can you comment on whether M2 is in saturation? Yes, V overdrive is greater than VTH, it is out of saturation, but V overdrive is in your control. Right? What is V overdrive? V overdrive is this 2i naught by mu C of W by L. I naught is fixed, I naught is given to you. So for a given I naught, can you change overdrive by doing something? You can change W by L, right? W by L is a design parameter. So you can change W by L. So if if V overdrive is lesser than threshold voltage, then this is in saturation. If it's not, then this is not in saturation. So if it's, let's say you did this calculation and you figured that it's not in saturation, or you hooked up the circuit in a simulator and you found that this is not in saturation, what will be the knob that you will turn? What will be, the, what will be your design change? You have to increase W by L, right? You have to increase the W by L of M2. Sorry, you have to increase the W by L of M1. Yeah, so I initially I assumed all the overdrives to be identical, but it need not necessarily be. Correct? Because two transistors can have two different overdrives based on what W by L that you have selected. Correct? So let's take some values now. So let's assume that we started off with the same thing that we have been doing, the threshold voltage of one volt. You have mu n C ox of 200 microamp per volt square, uh, W by L of one. This was the initial thing. And if, uh, if you, uh, and threshold voltage of one volt, right? This is the standard thing that we have been taking throughout the course. So if that is the case, this would have been two volts. VB max would have been three volts. This source voltage would have been one volt, right? So this is very precariously placed in the sense that it's everything is at the edge of saturation, right? Because your M2, uh, the condition of M2 is your gate is at two volt, your drain it as one volt. So that is at absolutely at the edge of saturation. So now I look at it and I see, say that I cannot afford to do that. I have to reduce this overdrive. I have, so rather I have to ensure that the M2 is not, is not at the edge. Right. So essentially, what I'm trying to get at here is that can I increase this voltage? Can I increase the, the source voltage of M1 or the drain voltage of M2? What can I do to increase the drain voltage of M1? <coughs> Note that W by L is something that you can change of both transistors. Yeah, so VTH is one volt. Yes, no, no, it doesn't have to be. As it turns out, the way I have taken it, it is one volt. I mean, the, the, the numbers that I have taken, right? The, I mean, this is the number that you have taken, right? If I, if, okay, okay, I didn't put I naught, right? I naught, let's say, is one million. No, okay, so the way we went about doing this is we assume that both I, M1 and M2 are identical. And then we went around the loop and we figured out, we tried to figure out whether uh, the condition of saturation is held or not. Then we figured that there are some certain, certain conditions, the saturation condition might be violated, right? For example, as you pointed out, if V overdrive is higher than VT, it looks like we'll have a problem, right? So then I said, okay, let's take some numbers and see what happens. So we just plucked out the num same numbers that we have been doing in tutorials and all. So if I naught is one milliamp, mu and C ox this, W by L this, VTH one volt. Then if we just plug in those values, you see that this is what we end, end up with. This, I haven't done anything magical. I've just put in the values, right? So if you choose I naught equal to one milliamp, and if you choose W by L of M1, M2 to be, W by L of M1, M2 to be one, threshold voltage of one volt, you end up with this configuration. You end up with this setup. Yes. 
how do we get a constant on yeah 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 so vb is also a design variable you can choose vb we'll get to that let's assume that vb are you asking here how do we get a constant on vb ah huh, okay so 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 if are you satisfied with this if you are satisfied with this the drain of a transistor is a certain voltage the gate had can be maximum something then right before it goes out of saturation again uh, if you have a transistor and you know this voltage right let's assume this is 2 volt can you comment what is the maximum gate voltage before the transistor goes out of saturation and threshold voltage of 1 volt it will not right because what is the condition your vds that is vd minus vs has to be greater than vg minus vs minus threshold voltage so this goes off right so it's always between relative difference between drain and gate if you know the drain source voltage is not required to figure out whether it's saturation or not okay so now uh, now walk me through this uh, so i want to reduce so so i want to increase the source voltage i want to increase this vs1 let's say i want to increase this vs1 so what should i do i don't want to change vb at this point not necessarily i can change w by l so i can change the aspect ratio of the transistor right so over time yeah yeah i just took you have to start off with somewhere so i just took a value and started and we are seeing that it's as it turns out is very precariously biased right at the edge i don't want to be there i want to make it a bit more robust design in terms of biasing so now i want to push vs1 higher so what should i do so we should increase the vd of m1 okay uh, why why not so if i have to increase vs1 what am i doing to the overdrive of m1 i'm decreasing the overdrive right so how can i decrease overdrive of a transistor for a same current increase w by l right increase the w by l so if i have to uh, if so if i let's say double the w by l how much will the overdrive reduce by 1 by root 2 if i have to reduce the overdrive by 500 millivolt in this case the overdrive was 1 volt i have to increase w by l by factor of 4 then right so if i increase if we started off with w by l of 1 so this was w by l of 1 then this was also 1 then we then we see that if i increase the w by l of m1 i can reduce the overdrive if i reduce the overdrive the source voltage can increase right so and if i have to go from let's say 1 volt of overdrive to 500 millivolt of overdrive i have to increase the w by l by a factor of 4 yes i just equated the currents i mean if we equate the current of m2 M two. We assume I not of one milliamp is going through M two. How can we ensure that it reduces the overdrive? Then we have to only. No, we cannot ensure that to start off. We have to assume that it works. You start off with assuming things work, and then you work backwards and see if the conditions are satisfied for the things to work or not. Okay. So right. So if if everything is in saturation, if everything is in saturation, who? What will be the current through M two? yeah in terms of vd so 1 milliamp will be equal to what mu n c of w by l vd minus 1 volt whole square correct so if everything works vd is fixed right if everything works vd is 2 volt it does it is not supposed to change correct so that fixes the vd so 
So do you, are you are you okay with this? If you're okay with this, you solve this and you get Vd equal to 2 volt. Right? Did I make a calculation mistake somewhere? It's fine, right? Okay. So I may have made a calculation. W while has to be 10. 2L, but I think W while has to be 10 because I took that to be 10. Okay. Yeah, so fine. So if this if you are satisfied with Vd equal to 2 volt. Then I am all I am doing, I am plugging plugging this two volt here. <laughs> right? And then we said that what if this is two volt, what is the maximum VB that I can have? It has to be three volt at least. I mean at max. If if VB is at max three volts and WYL of M1 and M2 are identical, what will be the source voltage of M1? The same current is flowing, so the same VGS, because I have assumed the same. It will be two volt. So source voltage of M1 will be one volt. So now if source voltage of M1 is one volt. Well, can I comment on the uh, on the state of operation of M2? Can I, why you have you have the you have the gate voltage, you have the drain voltage now. You know that drain, gate voltage. You you know that when you started off, you you know from there you know this is two volt. At, at, the, at the edge. Now I don't want Vs to be equal to one volt. Let's say I want it to go by another 500 millivolt up. What can I do? I can increase the WYL. I can increase the WYL by a factor of four. So if I go from, so this was initially 10, 10, right? This was 10, 10. So if I increase it to 40, then this one volt will go to 1.5 volt. Right, so this was initially for W by L equal to 10, this was one volt, right? For W by L equal to 10. If I increase the W by L by a factor of four, this will go to 0.5 volt. So naturally this will go to 1.5 volt, right? So you see that in this way, the uh, M2, uh, at least the M2 is not, not biased precariously right at the edge, right? But M1 still is biased right at the edge. So now what can I do to M1 to ensure that uh, there are a couple of things we can do to M1. I think I don't think there is a class. If you, do, if you have a class, you can leave, but I would like to make this point for a couple of minutes. If you're okay. Class, yeah. You don't have a class? Yeah. Have a class, then we'll stop it. We'll meet tomorrow.